be it tofu, soy milk, miso soup, and even soy sauce, the majority of the world enjoys soy products in one capacity or another. What if I told you that in soy products, there's a chemical that has been seen to lower your risk of certain cancers, hormone-dependent illnesses, and even cardiovascular diseases? So what is this magical molecule, and why is the majority of the world unaware of its existence? In soy plants, there are chemicals known as isoflavins. Isoflavins and their derivatives are a group of bioactive plant-based compounds that have received considerable attention due to their structural and functional similarities to naturally occurring steroid hormones. These compounds are believed to exert their physiological effects by binding to estrogen or androgen receptors, leading to downstream agonistic or antagonistic effects. The compounds of focus in this project are diazin, and specifically its metabolite equal. Equal has been found to exhibit some of the most potent estrogenic agonistic activity compared to its counterparts, meaning it's more biologically active in the body, with the ability to produce equal being associated with the aforementioned positive health outcomes. So what's the holdup? Why isn't everyone that's currently consuming soy and soy products already receiving these health benefits? Well, the enzymatic conversions of diazin into equal is dependent on the presence of specific gut bacteria that only a fraction of the population possesses. Believed to be due to generational differences in diet and environment, certain populations largely differ in their ability to produce equal, with 50-55% to 55 of adults of Asian descent being characterized as equal producers, compared to only 20-35% to 35 of the Western adult population. That's where our project comes in. Previous research employing methods, such as fecal transplants, has recently confirmed the ability to impart the equal producing phenotype on mice previously unable to metabolize it. In this project, we're attempting a novel approach to transmission through the use of phage inoculation of the native gut bacteria. So, in this study, we're genetically engineering a biocompatible filamentous bacteriophage, a virus that infects only E. coli, specifically chosen for its non lytic nature, to carry the genes necessary for diazin to E. coli metabolization. Once in the body, this phage will interact with the native gut bacteria, providing them with the desired enzymes. By using a specially modified bacteriophage, we can effectively create a probiotic that allows consumers to receive the health benefits of soy product derived equal. The rationale for using a phage is that they're able to affect the bacteria already in the gut, minimizing the risk of rejection or retention seen in traditional probiotics. With this, we hope to address the health disparities between individuals who can metabolize isoflavones and those who cannot, and allow everyone to reap the health benefits of soy. To this end, we first had to identify a bacterial strain capable of our desired metabolization and hone in on the specific enzymes responsible. Using a bacterial strain known as Lactococcus gariviae, we were able to codon optimize the desired genes, amplify them using PCR, and insert them into an E. coli strain known as Nissl. This created our two bacterial plasmid carriers, dubbed P1 and P2, where P1 carried the enzymes necessary for the first half of metabolization, diazin to dihydrodizin, and P2 capable of carrying out the final steps of the pathway, dihydrodizin to equal. To then insert these genes into a bacteriophage host, we first cultivated and isolated phage-infected bacterial colonies, isolated and cut the phage DNA, and ligated it with their desired enzymes carried on the P1 and 2 plasmids. After transforming this newly engineered phage into a competent strain of E. coli and confirming the uptake of our phage DNA, we grew and isolated our newly designed phage for future analysis. TLC plates were used to confirm that the enzymes in our P1 and 2 function as expected, and both successfully showed that when given the respective precursor, they were able to convert it into the appropriate metabolite. So, our current testing has demonstrated the successful conversion of diazin to dihydrodizin using the enzymes expressed in our P1 plasmid and the conversion of dihydrodizin to equal using our P2 plasmid. With this, we've ligated and introduced our desired genes into the M13 bacteriophage genome and successfully transformed the engineered phage into a competent E. coli strain. Our next step is to conduct in vitro studies and demonstrate the use and efficiency of bacteriophage transmission as a vector for providing new isoflavone conversion pathways. Through this research, we hope to soon focus on characterizing the specific interactions and pathways that lead to the health benefits observed in those with the equal producing phenotype and potentially replicate the beneficial effects seen by natural equal producers.